Joining us right now is Craig uh, Garthwaite. He is the Associate Professor at Strategy at Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. Uh, good morning to you. Do you think there's an antitrust problem here? I don't think there's a big antitrust problem. Certainly not something as large as what we saw with the mergers of the past couple years of Anthem Cigna and Aetna Humana. I mean, fundamentally, we have to remember that these are what we refer to as vertical mergers. And basically, it's not two competitors getting together. It's uh, two people that were customers and suppliers to each other thinking about how they want to reorganize the provision of healthcare services. It has far different implications than just two firms getting together with the hope of charging higher prices. When you go ahead. I, I, my question was, given what you know about the industry, assume this merger goes together, is the, is the opportunity here, as you say, it's vertical, to dramatically change the cost structure? Because that's what really this is all about. Do you change the outcome in terms of health care cost? Walmart combo, does that do it? Does that, in two years, three years, do I look at a 10% enhancement in, in reduction in cost? That, that would be the hope of a merger like this. I mean, it's not exactly clear what would happen with Walmart Humana, but what you could imagine is it's about building out a set of retail health clinics at Walmart stores that Humana patients would go to. You'd provide services there that make people ultimately healthier so they don't eventually have to end up in the inpatient hospital. And then the savings would be enjoyed by the merged retail provider and health insurer together. We don't have the incentive for that right now with many firms. If Walmart makes people healthier, a firm like Humana benefits, but how does Walmart get its taste of the profits? And so really what a vertical merger like this is about is about aligning the profit incentive so that firms will make more money if people are healthier, and then we're going to see if they can do it. Craig, you're talking about this coordinated care, but if we have both the CVS Aetna deal going through and potentially a Walmart uh, uh, Humana deal going through, this would really shift the landscape in terms of where care is done for potentially a lot of people. And what would that mean for hospitals? What would that mean for doctors? I, I think that the people who should be most worried about this reorganization of the vertical chain are the large inpatient hospitals. Right, the people like the, the, the sort of community hospitals that exist where we get lots of very expensive care today. You'd note across all of the vertical mergers, so United Health Group uh, through its Optum division, CVS, Aetna, and potentially Walmart, Humana, all of those are about combining providers and insurers, but no one's combining with an inpatient hospital because the goal is to keep people out of the hospital, to make them healthier so that we don't spend as much money there. That's good news potentially for insurers, it's good news for the retail provider, it's good news for patients. It's not such good news for hospitals, which are large fixed cost enterprises that need that volume in order to be profitable. Do you expect that the hospitals are gonna to go, to go rush into the government and say, we can't have these deals? I think it's a really tough case to make, right? This isn't, uh, there's not an anti-competitive nature here. If the statement is that the merged entity will make people healthier and then we don't need the hospital service, that's competition. Right, that's what we should expect. Right? We want people to generate new business models in healthcare that make people healthier and have lower costs. And this is the first step down what that chain will look like. We should imagine that if we get to what we think of as value-based healthcare, where we pay for health rather than just financing the provision of healthcare services, we need new organizations to compete right. in that environment. And hey, that's Craig, what these vertical mergers will hopefully provide us. Craig, I had asked both of this earlier and we were trying to sort, this, sort through this. If a deal like this were to take place, is there business that Humana would ultimately lose? Meaning, are there, are there clients and customers of Humana that would say, you know what, I can't be in business with you anymore because you're now a part of Walmart? That, that's unclear. We've heard talk about that. We certainly heard talk about that with the CVS Aetna merger, for example, um, that Anthem, which is a health insurer that had announced they were going to use CVS as their pharmacy benefit manager, Maybe they would now want to pull away because they don't want to be in business with one of their competitors. Ultimately, Anthem decided to stick with that deal for now. So it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. You will set up firewalls within these companies to protect data and try and keep the sort of competitive lines drawn. But it, it is possible at the margin they could lose some business. And then they're just going to have to weigh, you know, is the benefit from the merger greater than the business they would lose? You know, Craig, last week at our Healthy Returns Conference, uh, FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb said he wanted to look at some of these deals when it comes to PBMs. He thinks that sometimes these big companies make big deals with pharmacy makers that actually deter generics, for example, being able to get to market. 
Do you worry about the regulatory scrutiny post these deals? What's the challenge there to make sure that these guys don't use their big market heft to actually just keep the savings for themselves and not necessarily help lower costs for the system? Yeah, I would say on the pharmacy benefit manager side, actually the integration of the insurer and the PBM, like we see with CVS Aetna, like we see with Express Scripts Cigna, that should make that market work a little bit better because now the insurer wants to have lower drug costs so they can lower premiums and they can then have a more competitive product in the market. Right now, the PBM is potentially capturing some of the, the rebates that they negotiate, the discounts on those drug prices. Overall, I think the thing we have to keep looking at going forward, even after these vertical mergers, is that there is a sufficiently competitive health insurance market such that any savings that are generated, right? I said, like, we won't have the inpatient hospitalization, and so we'll be healthier, and we won't spend as much. We want those savings to flow back to customers, though. Right. And for it to flow back to customers, you need to have a competitive insurance market that forces an Aetna or a Humana to compete on premiums and return savings back to customers. Okay. So I think We're there'll be a lot of scrutiny right. to make sure that happens. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.